Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Would you please be upstanding for the arrival of our official guests? Ms Jennifer Howard, MP, Assistant Minister for Local Government, Member for Ipswich, and representing the Honourable Anastasia Palaszczuk, MP, Premier of Queensland and Minister for the Arts. Acting Deputy Commissioner Paul Stewart, APM, representing Commissioner Ian Stewart, APM, Queensland Police Service. Mr Andrew Kendall, National President of the Australian Bravery Association. Ladies and gentlemen, please join with me in welcoming our official guests. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. We'll await the arrival of His Excellency. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Would you please stand for the arrival of the Queensland Governor, His Excellency, the Honourable Paul de Jersey, AC, and Mrs K de Jersey. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. <coughs> your Excellency, with your permission, I'll begin. Yes. <coughs> His Excellency, the Governor, will present the following Australian Bravery Decorations and Awards. Awarded the Bravery Medal, Mr Brendan Liss and Senior Sergeant Sean Christopher Maskell. On the 12th of December 1997, Mr. Former Constable Brendan Liss and Senior Sergeant, then Senior Constable Sean Maskell, were involved in the arrest and pursuit of an armed offender at Rock Lee in Queensland. During a multi jurisdictional police operation, three high profile criminals were detained as they committed an armed robbery at a business in Rock Lee. Meanwhile, Senior Constable Maskell was outside the business when he saw a fourth offender who was armed with a revolver escaped through the rear of the building. He drove towards the man, ordering him to stop. The offender then ran towards the officer and fired several shots at him from close range. Senior Constable Maskell immediately returned fire over the roof of his vehicle at the offender and during the volley of shots was hit and knocked to the ground. Despite his injury, he managed to indicate the offender's escape route to a colleague who had arrived to assist. When Constable Liss arrived, on the scene, he drew his firearm and advanced towards the offender. He identified himself and called on the man to surrender. The offender then surrendered and several officers moved, towards, moved forward and arrested him. By their actions, Mr Liss and Senior Sergeant Maskell displayed considerable bravery. Awarded the Bravery Medal, Senior Constable Megan Leanne McGarry. On the afternoon of the 25th of July 2013, Senior Constable Megan McGarry assisted a colleague to rescue a woman who was intending to jump off the Story Bridge in Brisbane, Queensland. After consideration and discussion with another police officer who arrived at the scene, 
Senior Constable McGarry and the other officer began to climb the bridge in pursuit of the woman. By this stage, the woman had reached the top of one of the support structures of the bridge, 75 metres above the road base. The officers continued their climb and, on reaching the top, discovered that the woman had transversed to the second support structure about 500 metres away. Despite serious safety issues, including the threat of wind shear and without ropes or harnesses, Senior Constable McGarry and the other officer made their way to where the woman was now positioned on the bridge. Once there, they began negotiations with the woman, who made several threats to jump. When she climbed over the last safety rail, Senior Constable McGarry and the other police officer lunged at her, managing to grab hold of her arms. They dragged the woman back onto the bridge structure and escorted her down to the roadway, where she was treated by ambulance officers. For her actions, Senior Constable McGarry displayed considerable bravery. Awarded the Bravery Medal and awarded the Group Bravery Citation, awardees comprise of three members of the Queensland Police and a civilian who entered a burning unit in search of a man at Roma, Queensland on the 28th of October 2012. Senior Constable Benjamin Douglas Bjarnason, Senior Constable Michael Charles Hewitt, Constable Stuart Benjamin Mitchley and Mr Jamie Charles Perrin. When the three police officers arrived at the units, a security officer who was already on site informed them that a person possibly remained inside one of the burning units. Despite observing that the units where the man was allegedly <coughs> located was well affected by fire and smoke, and that smoke was also emitting from an adjacent unit, Senior Constable Bjarnson led the police officers and the security officer into the burning residence to conduct a search for the occupant. The group called out as they kept low to the floor to avoid the thick smoke. On seeing that the fire had engulfed most of the second room, the group were forced to retreat. When a voice was heard from the rear of the units, two police officers followed the sound and located the resident who, along with other residents, was then moved to a safe area. Meanwhile, Senior Constable Bjarnason re-entered the building, the burning unit, to continue the search, only leaving when he was alerted that the residents were safe. For his actions, Senior Constable Bjarnason displayed considerable bravery and is awarded the Bravery Medal. For their actions, the recipients are recognised by the award of the Group Bravery Citation. Awarded the Bravery Medal and awarded the Group Bravery Citation. Awardees comprise of members and former members of the Queensland Police who removed a suspected explosive from an offender at Logan, Queensland on the 2nd of November 1998. Assistant Commissioner Michael James Condon, APM. Senior Sergeant Peter Jahad Lieberg. Senior Sergeant Michael James Pearson, APM. Detective Senior Constable Peter John Bowser, Sergeant Paul David Williams. A man who appeared to be affected by alcohol entered the Logan Central Police Station regarding a personal matter. When police checked their records, they found he was wanted under warrant. As Senior Sergeant Pearson approached the man about the matter, he became extremely agitated, pulled a homemade explosive device from his briefcase and threatened to take out as many as he could. Senior Sergeant Pearson and then Sergeant Lyberg and other officers immediately lunged at the offender and a struggle ensued. As the officers wrestled with the offender, Senior Sergeant Pearson managed to grab hold of the device and ran with it to a nearby park. 
Then Detective Senior Sergeant Condon and members of the bomb squad, bomb squad soon arrived and Senior Sergeant Pearson was fitted with a protective body armour and <coughs> continued to hold the device until Detective Senior Sergeant Condon examined it and established that it would not detonate. At the police station, another officer moved the offender's briefcase, which contained suspected explosives, a safe distance away from his colleagues and maintained watch over the bag. Later, the homemade explosive de device, together with the devices in the briefcase, were disarmed and destroyed. For their actions, Assistant Commissioner Condon, Senior Sergeant Liebig and Senior Sergeant Pearson displayed considerable bravery and awarded the Bravery Medal. For their actions, the recipients are recognised by the award of the Group Bravery Citation. Awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct, Senior Constable Shane Gray Ashton. In the late evening of the 20th of March 2011, Senior Constable then Constable Shane Ashton retrieved a man who was submerged in the swollen Coles Creek in Nambour, Queensland. Constable Ashton and his colleague drove to a neighbourhood park off Garden Vale Drive, Nambour, following reports a man was behaving irrationally. On arrival, the officers approached a group of people who indicated that the man may have gone into the Swollen Creek. Constable Ashton and his colleagues searched the creek and soon observed a body under the surface. Constable Ashton entered the fast-flowing water, made his way to the man and pulled him to the surface. He swam the unconscious man to the bank, dragged him out of the water and provided CPR until ambulance officers arrived. Sadly, the man was deceased. For his actions, Senior Constable Ashton is commended for brave conduct. <clears throat> Awarded the commendation for brave conduct, Senior Constable Teresa Elizabeth Anderson and Senior Constable Leonard Joseph Moroni. On the morning of the 28th of April 2014, Senior Constable Teresa Anderson and Senior Constable Leonard Moroni assisted in the rescue of a woman and a young boy from a submerged vehicle at Springfield Lakes in Brisbane. In wet weather conditions, a vehicle skidded off Springfield Lakes Boulevard, ploughed into an urban lake and was sinking front end first. An off-duty police officer, Senior Constable Moroni, was first on the scene and he immediately entered the water and swam 25 metres out to the vehicle where he saw a woman and a young boy in the cabin. He was joined by two other people who had come to assist, including Senior Constable Anderson, who was also off-duty. With the assistance of another man, Senior Constable Moroni managed to free the young boy from the car and swim him to the lake edge. Senior Constable Anderson removed the rear parcel tray in an attempt to get the woman out of the back of the vehicle. At this point, the vehicle went below the surface and Senior Constable Anderson felt the woman beneath her in the water, pulled her to the surface and swam her back to the lake shore. For their actions, Senior Constable Anderson and Senior Constable Moroni are commended for brave conduct. <coughs>
awarded the group bravery citation. Awardees comprised of members of the Queensland Police who were ambushed and fired upon while attempt attending a neighbourhood dispute at West Chermside, Queensland on the 1st of May 2000. Senior Sergeant Darrell Elliott Green, Senior Constable Chanel Patricia Harris, Sergeant Christopher John Mulhall, Sergeant Brett Andrew Price. Three police officers were seated inside a police vehicle at Hanbury Street, West Chermside, with the passenger doors open when an offender fired a series of shots into the car, wounding all three officers before threatening to kill them. Despite suffering serious wounds, one officer managed to get out of the car, draw his service revolver and provide a line of protection for his wounded colleagues. Suffering similar wounds, another police officer used the radio to alert police communications of the incident. A fourth officer driving nearby heard the call for assistance and drove to the scene. He dragged the officers behind the vehicle for cover, scanned the area for the offender and provided situation reports as required by radio until other police and ambulance personnel arrived. Following the shooting, the offender fled to nearby bushland and was later found deceased. For their actions, the recipients are recognised by the award of the Group Bravery Citation. awarded the Group Bravery Citation. Awardees comprise of four members of the Queensland Police who rescued an elderly woman from a stricken vessel in the flooded Burnett River at Bundaberg, Queensland on the 26th of January 2013. Constable Brent James Schultz, Senior Constable Danita Marie Staines, Senior Constable Ryan Barry Thompson. As a result of ex tropical cyclone Oswald, the city of Bundaberg was lashed by flooding rain. A 16 metre sailing yacht with an elderly couple on board broke away from its moorings and began to float uncontrollably down the Burnett River. The elderly man scrambled up onto the deck of the yacht and as it collided with another vessel. Three police officers responded and observed an elderly woman on the deck as the yacht drifted before becoming stuck in mangroves. A fourth police officer arrived located a tinny and tied a rope to it in which the other three officers hung on to. He entered the fast flowing water and on boarding the yacht searched for the man. Meanwhile a second officer used the tinny to make his way to the vessel. Unable to locate the elderly man the two officers placed the woman in the tinny which was then pulled to safety by police officers on shore. Sadly the man was later found deceased. For their actions, the recipients are recognised by the award of the Group Bravery Citation. Your Excellency, that concludes this morning's awards. Could I now invite you to address the recipients and their guests? I begin, ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls, by acknowledging Ms Jennifer Howard, MP, representing the Honourable the Premier this morning, our other official guests, and you, our recipients, and your proud families and friends. It is a great pleasure for Kay and me to welcome you to Government House and to this very important ceremony. I additionally welcome our friends who are live streaming today's ceremony. Very up to date at Government House. <laughs> the citations for bravery, honours and awards invariably leave us in awe of the selflessness of the men and women who have put their own lives in danger 
in hazardous or perilous circumstances in order to intervene or go to the aid of others. That sense of awe, I know, is shared by others who, like me, have never known the experience of that irretrievable split-second commitment to action which all of our awardees this morning demonstrated. Our language, our English language, is simply not adequate when it comes to describing either the actions themselves or the admiration we feel for you all. The very names of our bravery decorations reflect that inadequacy, with the result that we're left with the ancient tradition and symbolism of titles like the Cross of Valour and the Star of Courage. Earlier this week, indeed, I presented the Star of Courage to the descendants of a young Queensland airman who died 71 years ago when he deliberately directed his plummeting aircraft into a field to avoid crashing into a sleepy village in England. To say the star was awarded, quote, for an act of conspicuous courage in circumstances of great peril, unquote, is barely sufficient to describe such an extraordinary action. This morning, we have 22 other Queenslanders whose actions equally defy adequate description or response. Pursuing armed defenders, preventing a woman from jumping to her death, searching for survivors in a burning building, dealing with the threat of an explosive device, going to the rescue of people in waterways and floodwaters. Each act truly extraordinary. As the personal representative of Her Majesty the Queen in our state, it is my honour to present these decorations on her behalf, as I've done this morning, and it is also a distinct privilege to meet the exceptional Queenslanders who have received their honours and the proud family members, colleagues and friends they have invited to share this special occasion with them today. I congratulate and thank the recipients on behalf of all Queenslanders and I look forward to speaking to you all at the reception immediately after this ceremony. There is a, additional significance to this morning's ceremony. 21 of the 22 recipients currently serve or have served with our police. And they are joined here today by a potential future colleague some of you may have met him already, others shortly will, and I speak of current Government House resident, our trainee police recruit dog, Gavel. Because Gavel is now only a three-month pup, and how he's grown in the two months almost with which we've been familiar with him, his duties are confined to greeting guests and sleeping. But when he grows into his very large paws in about a year's time, he will return to the dog squad to complete his training. As a full member of the dog squad, his courage and bravery may well be tested in circumstances similar to those we've heard described this morning. We have every hope that he will live up to his name and be of great assistance in the dispensation of justice and that he becomes as great an asset to our state and our community as the officers and civilians we have so rightly honoured here this morning. Thank you all. Thank you, Your Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the Vice Regal Anthem and the Governor's departure. Excellency, could I invite you and Mrs. De Jersey to retire for a few moments while we reorganise the room for the photo? Thank you. Lieutenant Moran, would you take our uh, official guests out, please? Thank you. 
And if I could ask the recipients to please take their seats. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Uh, morning tea is now served on the lawn behind you, so if you'd like to exit through the two doors that you came in, champagne and sandwiches await. <laughs>